Mixed, augmented, and virtual reality are the next frontiers of gaming, and as the industry grows, VR games continue to feel more like games and less like interactive experiences. The Light Brigade is a strong example of this. Today, I'm reviewing this award-winning, roguelike VR shooter that has hit me with an unexpectedly interesting experience. If you're like me and skeptical of any game that has award-winning in its description, give this video a like to help out a small channel. This is Amalgam VR, and I'm setting expectations for virtual reality. Let's dive into this review of The Light Brigade. Let's start with immersion, because that's really the goal of any virtual reality experience. This game has taken a concept like Prayer and turned it into a surprisingly entertaining and intuitive feature. The way you're able to use it to open doors and rescue your fellow brigadiers is done in a really immersive way. If you find yourself not sure of what you should be doing at any given time, randomly clasping your hands together can quite literally open doors for you. It's almost like turning meditation into a superpower and it's immersively executed here. Then there's the real sense of danger in this game, especially when you're just starting out, you feel like you're always in genuine danger. When you get hit in this title, it tends to hurt a lot, but as a newly minted member of any combat focused outfit, you shouldn't feel invincible and that's very much the case here. You can level up in this game though, and as you do, you unlock better gear and new classes. Certain weapons are limited to certain classes, but when you think of it as an actual brigade, it makes sense that different roles have different weapons so it doesn't hurt the immersion here. Along the way, you'll collect what I can only assume are souls from fallen enemies and saved comrades. These souls are then immersively delivered to freedom through some of the most unique dark fantasy methods I've seen in VR. Let's not forget about the weapons in this game. It feels like weapons really are in your hands. You can't just wave them around like drumsticks because they have a real sense of weight making shooting something like a rifle with one hand exceedingly difficult. All in all, this game is just as immersive as you hitting the like button and subscribing. Subtle plug, I know. Now let's talk about the mechanics, because the Light Brigade really nailed what they were going for here. Right off the bat, I should remind you that this game is in the roguelike genre. Basically, it's something of a very challenging but fun exploration game. There is no saving, so when the enemy unalives you, you'll have to start all over, but not completely from scratch. You don't retain the equipment you find along the way, but you retain your levels and class weapons, which can be modified at the blacksmith outside of the dungeon. Essentially, if you die, you start the dungeon from the beginning, but you start with better gear each time. Speaking of dungeons, imagine walking into a maze where the walls and paths change every time you try it out. That's what it's like in these dungeons because these levels are procedurally generated. Of course, this means every time you dungeon dive, the game designs a new maze for you that follows a specific theme like mountainous or underground terrain. At first, this totally caught me off guard because I didn't know this was procedurally generated and thought the map design was just weird. The layouts can feel a bit odd, like walking into a room only to find the edge of the world odd, but it's the quirkiness you'd expect from procedurally generated terrain. Then there's the weapon attachment system, which has its own ideas, especially when it comes to mixing magic crystals and World War II weapons. You can add accessories onto your guns that change how bullets work. You can even snap a red dot sight onto a gun with no rails, which I'll gloss over because of magic, I guess. These features let you add a personal touch to your experience with these weapons and can affect your approach to gameplay. Classes aside, you can turn a rifle into a marksman rifle or sniper rifle with the right approach. And speaking of customization, there are tarot cards. Throughout your dungeoneering, you'll find these cards that give you special abilities. The cool part is every time you find them, you'll get a chance to choose from three different cards. Each one is useful if your playstyle is designed around it. The bonuses from these cards, like everything else, goes away when you die. But the longer you stay alive, the more you collect and the more powerful you become. It adds an element of choice that feels rewarding and randomized every time you play. Now let's talk about theme because I really like what the developers did here. A world shrouded in darkness and mystery, but there is a glimmer of hope and it's not just you. In this game, you're the new member of the not so elite religious outfit called the Light Brigade. Let me paint a picture for you. Humanity is on the brink of extinction and you, a dying little flame, join other dying flames on a quest into the darkness. Your mission is to rescue the souls of your fallen comrades and unravel the mystery around your current reality. It's a journey filled with genuine danger, discovery, and the relentless pursuit of hope. 
As you step beyond the gates, you find yourself up against the Obsidian forces, the primary aggressors that threaten to extinguish that earlier mentioned hope. These adversaries aren't just weak game fuel either, they're the embodiment of the challenges you have to overcome to save your world. Each encounter feels like a test, a battle not just for survival, but for the future. That all sounds dramatic, but the stakes feel real in this somewhat depressing world and it's a nice touch. One thing that sets this game apart is the seamless blend of guns and magic. It's a combination that, until now, hasn't been executed in a way that truly resonated, at least not for me. If you imagine wielding the raw power of magic with the precision of World War II weaponry, you have this game's combat in a nutshell. This fusion is as awkward as it sounds, but it creates a gameplay experience that is both fun and unique. It's great how indie developers are willing to take risks that big developers aren't because it allows for games like this to exist. Shooting magic bullets feels as natural as walking in this game, and the fact that your enemies can do the same with increasing effectiveness really adds an unpredictable element here. The Light Brigade's theme really does feel like a dark journey with some subtle emotional elements. As a member of the Light Brigade, you're not just fighting for survival, you're fighting to bring light to a world swallowed by a darkness that kind of feels like it already has you beat. Now let's dive into the visuals, and this is where things get weird in an interesting way. At first glance, you might notice that the visual quality doesn't quite hit resolution heights we've seen in other titles, but it's all by design and it adds to this game's unique charm. The NPC chat boxes are a minimalist's dream come true. They're simple, clear, and make reading dialogue quick. A lot of games make dialogue feel like you're sifting through a Shakespearean play, but this approach is a breath of fresh air. It's like this game respects your time and wants you to focus on the task at hand and not walls of text, so they don't throw too much at you. But to address the elephant, we're in low poly territory here. For the uninitiated, low poly refers to a style where everything looks a bit geometrically blocky, like the world is made of origami, but it's a deliberate choice that gives a distinct look and feel. This style brings a certain nostalgic charm and focuses on a strong atmospheric experience rather than aesthetics. While the visuals won't wow you, with the exception of these awesome looking tarot cards, the aesthetic choice of low poly brings its own set of advantages. It crafts an environment that's easy on the eyes and relatively easy on your hardware since it's not rendering insane graphics. VR games, at least for now, are primarily being made by indie devs or small individual developers. That's to say aesthetics take time and resources that individual or smaller teams just don't have. This game does a great job turning a low poly experience into a fun one, just like other games I reviewed on this channel. Check it out after this review, you might like it. Now, let's talk about options, and this game doesn't just tip its hat to motion aids, it throws the entire wardrobe at it. When I say this game has a lot of motion aids, imagine trying to find a needle in a haystack, except the needle is your holster adjustment settings and the haystack is a mountain of options big enough to give you altitude sickness. There are a boatload of options for this game, giving you the ability to adjust just about anything. One disappointing surprise is the inability to turn off joystick turning altogether. It's one stone left unturned in an otherwise impressive list of adjustments, but in the grand scheme of things, they give you some welcome unexpected options like being able to enable friendly fire if you like griefing unsuspecting NPCs. The motion aids and options keep going too. Dominant hand selection, realism presets, and even gun angle adjustments are here. For the record, guns felt good out of the box for me, but you can tweak pretty much anything to your own playstyle. Now, game developers that want to show off how inclusive they are put features like real-time feedback with system specs and an in-game FPS counter. This is awesome, a new favorite feature of mine and something I expect in any game with a perfect score in motion aids going forward. Lastly, we'll talk about audio quality, and I don't know why this is usually the last category I cover, but that's not by design. That said, I like the way this game approaches NPC chatter. It's like they took a page from The Legend of Zelda. No super sophisticated voice acting, just a grunt or word to grab your attention. This isn't uncommon in VR or otherwise, and it works here. Oddly enough, it adds to the atmosphere. I probably wouldn't have much to say either if I was in this guy's shoes. Other than that, when interacting with this world, expect a cartoonish twist to the sound effects. 
It really does work well in this game though, similarly to how visuals do. The goal with audio is usually to deliver an appropriate experience and this game does just that. From the sound of chambering rifles to the atmospheric nuances that breathe life into this world, this game audio speaks for itself. But you might have to try this one out for you to really grasp what I'm getting at. With that last category out of the way, you already know what time it is, let's check the scoreboard. Starting with the theme, theme gets a 5 out of 6. Embarking on this journey as a member of the Light Brigade, your mission feels like a genuine call to arms against this game's looming threat. This game does the subtle storytelling thing really well. Mechanics gets a 5 out of 6 because the procedural generation of levels brings an element of unpredictability that keeps you on your toes and entertained. The Light Brigade has a near-perfect mix of challenging combat, fun exploration, and unique mechanics. Immersion gets a 4 out of 6. The game's innovative use of prayer and palpable sense of danger immerses you in this world, especially if you've always wanted to worship a giant floating rock. Motion Aid scores a 5 out of 6. In the realm of virtual reality, accessibility is the gateway to adventure and this game doesn't gatekeep. Also, the system specs and FPS feedback thing is awesome. And lastly, visual quality gets a 2 out of 6. These visuals aren't winning any beauty contests, but its low poly aesthetic brings a certain charm that complements this game's atmosphere. The art style really fits this game's intended aesthetic. Sprinkle in the fact that the whole roguelike thing is done pretty well and this game has earned its overall score of 5 out of 6. If you like challenging games that don't hold your hand, you'll definitely like this one. And with that, leave a comment below for a VR game you want to see reviewed, and thanks for watching. Tune in weekly for more VR game reviews, and don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content that may go beyond just reviewing games. And until next time, stay immersed.